All right, so this Pope Francis is uh, <laughs> not your typical Pope. All kinds of, um, well, liberal moves. A lot of conservative Catholics are upset. A lot of people are puzzled. Um, the latest thing is this, and I'm not sure how recent it is. It may go back a couple of months at least, but Pope Francis will officially allow p priests to bless same-sex couples. This is uh, a departure from what I know about uh, doctrine, at least. We're joined by an expert panel, Patrick Novakoski, managing partner at Nova Media. More on that in a moment. And also Michael Matt, editor of the Remnant newspaper, the great Catholic newspaper. Uh, but first, gentlemen, for a little context, uh, before we get to you, we want to go to Rome. And our Alex Salvi is standing by. Alex. The Vatican releasing a document detailing the new position of the church. Same-sex couples can receive blessings as long as the blessing is not conflated with or confused with the sacrament of marriage. The document reiterates that marriage is between a man and a woman, but it adds blessings to the individuals should not be outright banned by the church. It reads that people seeking a relationship with God should not be subject to a so-called exhaustive moral analysis. The writing responds to a letter from conservative Catholic cardinals, including Raymond Burke of the United States, who had his salary stripped by Pope Francis last month, asking for a clarification on the Pope's stance. They ask, quote, is it possible that in some circumstances a pastor could bless unions between homosexual persons, thus suggesting that homosexual behavior as such would not be contrary to God's law and the person's journey toward God? The eight-page document released today said the question should be answered on a case-by-case -case basis. A drastic deviation from the prior position that same-sex attraction is not sinful, but homosexual acts are. The document reads, quote, Even when a person's relationship with God is clouded by sin, he can always ask for a blessing, stretching out his hand to God. The Pope hinted at possible reforms during the Church Synod back in October. And after this document, there is certainly a heightened expectation that much more dramatic transformations could be on the horizon when the group reconvenes next year. In Vatican City, for Newsmax, I'm Alex South. Okay, I may need some clarification on the clarification. I am joined now. We are joined by Patrick Novakoski and, um, and Michael Matt. Michael, uh, first to you. I'm a bit confused. Can you uh, straighten us out? Uh, you're not the only one who's confused, Greg. This is uh, this is a dark moment, and I think I think the one of the big problems is they're sort of using subterfuge. They're saying this is not a blessing, or this is not to be equated with with marriage. This is not technically a blessing of same-sex unions. But what they've been working for for a long time, and this is not just you know me speaking. We have Cardinal Mueller, we have Cardinal Burke, high-ranking cardinals of the church who are extremely concerned about this. I think the objective is to get the camel's nose under the tent. So that the world, the media takeaway is going to simply be the Catholic Church has finally gotten over herself. She doesn't believe in the Bible-based uh, foundation of her own doctrinal teachings, which I think is deceptive. I think it's deceptive first and foremost to those who are involved in these, in these unions. It's not fair to them. They're basically being lied to in the name of establishing a more woke Catholic Church. And it's very upsetting. Uh, thank you. Patrick, can you tell us what you think of this? Yeah, I, I was going to use the exact same idiom as Michael did. It's it's the the camel's nose underneath the tent. It, it, this papacy has been slouching for Gomorrah in a sense for since the beginning. Um, the, the document says that there's no there's no change in church teaching that you know it's it's we can give we can't give a sacramental blessing to same sex couples or couples in irregular situations, uh, divorced and then remarried. Catholics, um, but a pastor in his judgment can give a blessing. So the teaching is unchanged, but it's really opened the door in a sense to, uh, a, a, in, a, in a sense, a, a liberalization of church teaching on, on this issue and blurring the lines of what's really morally licit according to 2,000 years of Catholic teaching and an even longer biblical teaching, thousands and thousands of years. All right, now let's go through a couple of basics. I do believe, and I think you believe, and I think uh, God believes, Jesus believes, everybody everybody can be blessed. Everybody can have a relationship with God, correct? No matter what they've done. That's right, right? No question. Sure. Okay, number one, we got that. Number two, let's say I go to, uh, I go to the Pope, and I have, say, my, my girlfriend, uh, a girlfriend, and let's say hypothetically, okay, it's an extramarital girlfriend. I cannot go with my extramarital, with my affair partner to the Pope and say, 
bless us, correct? Correct. Right, yeah, the document reaffirms Catholic teaching on marriage, on homosexuality, and, and the, just essentially the moral teaching on the church. It sets that out very clearly. The question is, how will this be enforced? Um, the, there, there are bishops who have allowed sacramental same-sex blessings for, for years, and the Vatican has not cracked down on them. This document says, no, you can't do that. Is the Vatican going to reach out to the German bishops, the Belgian bishops, and say, you need to stop this, or, or there'll be penalties for you? Uh, somehow, I don't think that's going to happen. All right. I, I did. I thought I heard, though. I mean, I, I still am unclear. Is it a blessing for the two individuals or it can actually at times case by case ba basis, Michael, be a blessing for the same sex couple? Is that your read? I, of course, and I think that's what what's at at base here is this idea that you know the biblical idea that this is a sin that cries to heaven for vengeance. You don't hate the sinner, but the sin is a very serious sin. If you have any uh, message coming out from the Vatican saying that blessings can now be given, whether to the individual or to the couple, it only contributes to massive confusion on the part of an already confused and bewildered church. I mean, let's face it, the church is really in trouble. People are not going to mass anymore. They're not practicing this religion anymore because they're not getting a clear idea of what the church even stands for. And this is only going to contribute to it. And again, I think what the main thing they want to say is that we are a merciful church and we think the old church is rigid and the Bible's a bit rigid. We are merciful. We're going to do whatever we want uh, with respect to coming off as a more merciful and more woke church that's going to accept some of these things. So I think the details of the blessing is less important than the takeaway for the New York Times. Catholic Church, blessing same-sex couples. That's that, I think, is, is the really dangerous end game that's going to confuse a lot of people. All right. But we do know that there is forgiveness, right, in Christianity. I guess I am. T All right. Well, let me ask you this as we wrap this up, because now I am thoroughly confused. <laughs> uh, everybody deserves this relationship with God. Um, I don't know. Let me ask you this, actually. Do you think... Patrick, this might be because there are more gay priests in the clergy probably than ever before. Now, let's face it, a lot of priests are gay. Is this a move from them? Uh, is, it, is it? Yeah, certainly there's been pressure from the, 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 the priests uh, on, on the left to uh, liberalize Catholic teaching on sexuality. And I, I don't think we would have seen anything like this under John Paul II or Cardinal Ratzinger when he was prefect of the doctrine, cardinal uh, prefect for the congregation of the doctrine of the faith, uh, or as Pope Benedict. So uh, I, I think, yeah, definitely we're getting pressure from homosexual priests and from the uh, the, the liberals in, in the church in, in certain parts of Europe. Forgive me, I wish we could talk about this, not that, but very briefly, Michael, can you tell me about the joys of Christianity as you see them? The joys of Christianity. Well, this is this is the the, the we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ it's this week. I mean, absolutely nothing takes away from what we know to be true. We are all proud ca practicing Catholics. We know the Catechism, even if the Vatican seems a bit vague <laughs> on what the Catechism teaches on these things. But yeah, the joy of Christianity, celebrating the birth of Christ, and understanding that what we're seeing right now is the attempt to undermine the Catholic Church, which only strengthens our faith in that there seems to be almost a demonic effort to water everything down because the church does provide the answers to all of us. We're all sinners. It does provide the answers. But what we're begging is for Team Francis to go back to the clarity of a Pope John Paul II, go back to the clarity of the catechism. And we're simply not seeing that. And no one else is either, including homosexual couples, gay couples, lesbian couples, who, in my opinion, are being absolutely deceived right now, lied to. Uh, Patrick, very briefly. Tell us about being a Christian. Being a Christian is being madly in love with Jesus Christ and being all in for the Bible, his teachings, and the church that he founded. It's, it's that simple. That's where the real hope and the real joy is. And distorting 2,000 years of teaching is not going to get us there. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Michael. To be continued. Absolutely. We'll right Thank back. you, Greg.